Hi, I'm John Cranton with Vegas Sports Masters. Going to take a look at the 2017 SEC football preview, a powerhouse conference. First, want to remind me of the Jim Vice is off that 72 and 48 NFL run. He has a preseason special. Sign up before August 1st, four weeks of the NFL preseason, including Jim's preseason game of the year for 29 bucks. And if you sign up before August 1st, you get a week of baseball thrown in. Just, just call 888. 888- 777-4155. All right, let's check out the 2017 SEC West Division. We're going to start with Alabama Crimson Tide. You know, the SEC, they had a stretch where they won eight of ten national titles, including seven in a row at one point. We saw Auburn a couple of years ago came up just a few seconds short against Florida State in a 34-31 to thriller. Meanwhile, Alabama, they won four of the last eight years. But last year, boy, was that a tough one. They were 14-0, and 0, looking to win another national title. And Clemson came up in the final play to beat them. So this certainly has a team with a chip on its shoulder. But what a tough way to end last season. Last year in the SEC West, Alabama was perfect 8-0. and 0. Auburn and LSU were right behind at 5-3 and 3 in the SEC title game. The last two years, Alabama has faced Florida winning both times 29-15 to 15 as a 17-point favorite last year, and then two years ago, 54-16 to 16 whitewash as a 23-and-a-half-point favorite. So let's start with the SEC West Alabama, 14-1 straight up. They also covered betting numbers, 10-5 and 5 against the spread. Vegas has them as the favorite to win the national title of 7-5. to 5. Also, the win total for Bama is 10-and-a-half with the over at minus 180, so they're making you pay to take in Bama to win anywhere from 11 plus games. Again, this team is loaded once again. You got six starters back on offense, five on defense. There are some changes, though. Nick Saban has a new offensive coordinator in Brian DeBall. He comes over from the New England Patriots where he ran the spread offense with the quarterback Tom Brady, and it's an offense that is just so balanced for Nick Saban. 38.8 points per game last year. That was 16th in the nation. Tremendous balance, 210 yards passing. 245 yards rushing. That ground game was 12th in the nation. You got the quarterback, Jalen Hurts, back. 23 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. Oh, when he ran for 954 yards, 5 yards per carry, a dynamic threat who's going to lead this team. Now, he does lose his top wide receiving targets with the exception of junior Calvin Ridley, who was a terrific target. 769 yards. He's back. They got Cam Sims stepping in, 152 yards, and a sophomore in Trayvon Diggs who had 11 catches last year, but we'll get more. But, of course, this offense for the Crimson Tide is totally balanced. Junior running backs Damian Harris and Bo Scarborough are back. Harris with topping 1,000 yards, 7.2 yards per carry, and Scarborough with 6.5 yards per carry. And, of course, four starters back on a terrific offensive line anchored by center Bradley Bozeman and left tackle Jonah Williams. They also pick up a terrific right guard in Lester Cotton. He's a former top recruit. He did play in nine games last year, started twice at left guard. So this offensive line is going to be outstanding again. And the the offense is going to be balanced. The defense, number one in college football in points allowed last year, 11.8 points per game. And they were totally dominant against the run, just 63.4 yards rushing per game, which is absolutely incredible. So you get an Alabama defense that has been top six in points allowed for five consecutive years, including a pair of number one rankings, including last year. Now, they do lose a couple of their top linebackers, but they do have senior Rashawn Evans. He made his first start in against Washington in the playoffs last year in January, and they pick up an early enrollee in Dylan Moses, a terrific five-star recruit. And then the secondary is really loaded for the Crimson Tide, Anthony Everett is back at corner along with Minka Fitzpatrick and Ronnie Harrison. The two of them form the, probably the best safety duo in the country. Now, the schedule for the Crimson Tide is going to be fun early as they open against Florida State. Might even be a rematch later on for the national title. That game is going to be played at in Georgia, at Atlanta, Georgia. And then Alabama's got four road games to look at. A&M, Vandy, Mississippi State, and the big one, the Iron Bowl against Auburn. Toughest stretch for them is really going to be September 23rd to October 21st, a month where there's really going to be 
difficult. They're going to play Texas A&M. They're going to host Ole Miss, Arkansas, and Tennessee. But really, Vegas has them penciled in for over or over under 10 and a half wins. Yeah, they're more likely with this quarterback and dominant defense to hit the 11 or 12 mark win mark again. All right, let's go on to one of their their biggest rival here in the Auburn Tigers. Gus Malzahn hopes are high for Auburn and Malzahn because they're off an eight and five season straight up, but they covered betting numbers nine and four against the spread. And you got 15 starters back. It's a run oriented team with a vastly improved defense that was nine and four under the totals. You got eight starters back on offense, seven on defense. It was a young team last year that played exceptionally well. One of the changes on the coaching staff is they bring in Chip Lindsey as offensive coordinator. He came from Arizona State where he loved to run the air raid attack, but Auburn is more of a run first team and he has worked with Melzahn in the past. So I don't expect for them to be a spread offense and chucking it all over the field. It's still going to be a talented ground game. This offense last year was sixth in the country in rushing 271 yards rushing per game. Not a great passing attack, 169 yards, but they got the job done with 31.2 points per game. And they should be a great running team again because you got junior quarterback Sean White is available. Nine touchdowns, three interceptions. They pick up Jared Stidham, a sophomore transfer. You might remember him two years ago when he was at Baylor. He was great at Baylor. 12 touchdowns and two interceptions. So they have one of the best one-two punches at quarterback in college football for the upcoming season. You got four of five receiving targets come back to a passing game that ranked 112. Still should be a run-oriented attack. But the key is three starting offensive linemen are back. Austin Golson, Darius James, and Braden Smith. Plus, they pick up an All-American in Casey Dunn. He's a graduate transfer from Jacksonville State. So this is going to be a dynamite ground game, again, leading the way. The backfield has running backs, junior running backs, Kieron Johnson and Cameron Petaway. Petaway had over 1,200 yards rushing, 5.9 yards per carry, leading the SEC with 122.4 yards per game. And then you got this defense, which really impressed last year. 15.6 points per game was fifth in the nation. That was the first under defensive coordinator, Kevin Steele, who came over from LSU. He is back, and it really looks like a solid defense. Again, you got Dontavious Russell up front. You got sophomore defensive end Marlon Davidson. And the linebackers are strong with Deshaun Davis, a junior, and senior Trey Williams. The schedule for Auburn. They got three games in midseason that is a, really a brutal road stretch. All on the road here, LSU, Arkansas, and Texas A&M right in midseason. They do get Bama at home November 25th in the Iron Bowl. And don't forget, they got Clemson, defending national champ, in week two. So they got some tough games on the schedule still with the returning talent in this ground game and vastly improved defense. Auburn is likely to win nine or ten games. And the Vegas number for the Auburn Tigers has eight with the over minus 140. Seems like a, a relatively soft number there. All right, let's move on to the LSU Tigers, eight and four last year, five and three in the SEC. Ed Orgeron is back as coach after taking over in week five when he went six and two down the stretch. He brings in a new offensive coordinator in Matt Canada. This guy loves the spread attack and a wide open air raid offense so this is going to be a fun lsu offense to watch to watch this coming season look for a lot of more misdirection plays under canada some jet sweeps things like that to open up the passing game now this offense averaged 28.3 points per game last year they were 101st in the nation in passing gotta believe that's going to improve the ground game was 21st in the country with 233 yards per game they returned Senior quarterback Danny Etling, 11 touchdowns and five interceptions, over 2,000 yards. But they have a pro-style sophomore quarterback in Lindsey Scott Jr. to keep an eye on. Ground game, though, should be very good. Four starters back on the offensive line, including two-year starter, right tackle, and center Will Clapp. He's coming back from a shoulder surgery, but he's not alone. They got a terrific left tackle in K.J. Malone and junior right guard Mayo Tuhuma back. So this is going to be a great ground attack again and the new-look passing game. Probably is going to be impressive with the ground game to help it out. In the backfield, you got junior tailback Darius Goose. He had over 1,300 yards rushing, a whopping 7.6 yards per carry, 15 touchdowns, leading the SEC. And you got wide receiver DJ Clark, a senior wide receiver, 466 yards, but 17.9 yards per carry. Outside of those guys, there's a little, exper little experience with the skill position talent, but still this defense. 
for LSU is going to be terrific. Once again, 16.4 yard, points per game allowed. That was sixth in the nation. And they were terrific at stopping the run, giving up 121 yards per game. They have a 3-4 defense. Key to watch here is this defensive end, Arden Key. He had 12 sacks. He's projected to be an NFL first-round pick. He's going to come back to play for LSU this season. They also have Devin White. He was all SEC freshman honoree last season. So this defense should be very strong again, especially when you look at the secondary three or four starters back, led by cornerback Kevin Tolliver the second. So another powerhouse defense and probably more passing attack is going to get all, as LSU quite a few wins. And this, when you look at the schedule, probably should start 5-0. and oh, And then in week six, they're heading to Florida State. That game was a 16, oh, I'm sorry, Florida Gators. That was a 16-10 to 10 loss last year in a defensive game. And they get out there, have to head to Alabama on November the 4th. LSU Tigers haven't been covering numbers the last few years, 21 26, 31, and 1 against the spread. Have to look for them to be around 10 wins or so. All right, let's check out the Texas A&M Aggies for 2017. Kevin Sumlin's team off an 8-5 and five campaign. Started off good and then folded. Actually, they were 6-0 and oh last year. Finished up 2-5. and five. They carry a 0-9 and nine spread run into the new season. They were 4-9 and nine against the spread last year. He is a terrific recruiter. He's had... Three of the top, uh, three of five top ten recruiting classes this past off season was number 15th in the nation. The offense is very potent, 34.8 points per game with great balance, over 211 yards rushing and passing per game. And they return senior quarterback Jake Hoovernock, six touchdowns and two interceptions, 884 yards. But he's going to be pressed by a couple of talented freshmen coming in, and Nick Starkle and Kellen Mond. They do have wide receiver Christian Kirk back. He's a very short-handed receiver, 928 yards. Beyond him, there's not a lot of experience, but there are quite a few talented freshmen coming in. Sumlin loves speed, and he's a very good recruiter. So you're going to see some new looks in freshman Cameron Buckley, a wide receiver, Hezekiah Jones, and German Osman, because three of their four wide receivers are gone. They're top pass catchers. So you see some kids in there, but they do have some talent. You also have three starters back on the offensive line, anchored by sophomore center Eric McCoy, a terrific talent. This team only allowed 21 sacks last year. In the backfield, you got sophomore running back Trayvon Williams, over 1,000 yards rushing, 6.8 yards per carry. The defense for Texas A&M was outstanding, number 37 in the nation, giving up 23.8 points per game for defensive coordinator John Chavez. This guy returns. The linebacker core is really strong for the Tigers, led by Otero Alaka, Richard Moore, and Cullen Gillespie. The Aggies had some difficulty against the pass last year, giving up 442 total yards per game. So that's really the key is to try and figure out to improve the secondary, but the talent is there. You look at the 2017 schedule for Texas A&M. They're going to open at UCLA. This was a game that they won last year, 31-24, to as a four-and-a-half-point favorite. And they really only have four true road games. And they get Alabama at home October 7th, the big one. And then LSU is going to end the season. Probably look at them to go about 8-4 and four this season. All right, we're going to come back and look at Mississippi State. But first, Jim Feist has a special free offer for you. This is Jim Feist in Las Vegas, and I want to thank you for watching all of my videos. We'd love if you'd subscribe to my sports betting channel. It's free, so why not subscribe? Just click on the subscribe button and I'll give you seven days of free plays. Seven days of free plays on me. You'll get a YouTube message sent to you with the word, the code word, and an 800 number. You just call in with the code and whatever you want, call in and we'll give you free service each and every day for seven straight days. And thanks again for watching and subscribing. All right, that Texas A&M betting number in Vegas for the over-under for the win totals is going to be seven. In fact, the over is plus 105, and that is a talented team coming back on both sides of the ball. Uh, let's take a look at the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Their over-under projection is five and a half in Las Vegas. They're off a six-win season, six and seven, five and eight against the spread. You got Dan Mullen. He certainly missed quarterback Dakota Prescott last year, but for this season, you got seven starters back on offense. 
six on defense and a very good, a good recruiting class, top 30. The bad news is the schedule is really difficult for the Bulldogs. First, let's start with the offense. 30.4 points per game. They had decent balance, 209.7 yards passing, 230 yards rushing per game. That was number 23 ground game in the nation as uh, the, the coach got back to more running the football. You got junior quarterback Nick Fitzgerald back, 21 touchdowns, 10 interceptions passing. However, he is a dynamic two-way threat, a terrific runner, over 1,300 yards rushing, 7.1 yards per carry. This is going to be a great ground attack again. Even when they look to pass, this guy can run the football. Plus, in the backfield, sophomore running back Arias Williams is back, 5.3 yards per carry, 720 yards. Wide receiver Donald Gray is a junior. He had 709 yards back to keep defenses honest. And they pick up a four-star freshman running back in Keelan Hill. So this should be a very potent and balanced attack. The defense last year fell off the map. It was a terrible Bulldog defense, 33.1 yard, uh, points per game. That was number 97th in the nation. They allowed 283 yards passing per game. That was one of the worst in the country. So they made some changes. They bring in a new defensive coordinator in Todd Grantham. He arrives bringing in a new base 3-4 scheme. He has plenty of SEC experience because he led the Georgia Bulldogs defense from 2010 to 2013. And he's a different type of defensive coordinator, too. He's very fiery and he's demanding a hard-hitting defense. We saw that in the spring game as the defense caused a lot of turnovers in some of these games. So might have a new look for this Bulldog defense, a more attacking, aggressive unit. Now, there's also some new looks as they bring in seven junior college transfers of players on defense to try and improve the depth. And some of these guys are, are worth noting. Michigan, he was a former Michigan State defensive lineman in Monte Sweat. He's a 6'6 guy who can play up front. And they have a former Georgia commitment as well as uh, junior Chauncey Rivers is coming in. He's, a, he's formerly uh, a Georgia commit. In addition, you got... Safety Jonathan Abraham, he also was going to the Georgia Bulldogs and ends up here. Plus, freshman linebacker Willie Gay is worth watching. This guy's a top prospect and chose the Bulldogs over several other key, bigger SEC schools. Now, the schedule for Mississippi State, a big one, is week three. They're going to be hosting LSU. And that was a game. They were a two-touchdown underdog last year and lost just 23-20. to If you're looking for a revenge game for Mississippi State, well, that's easily... Alabama blew them out 51 to 3, and they're going to be hosting them November the 3rd. Also, they were on a 33 28 and one run under the total, probably improved defense, and certainly a run only at the team might be a team to look at under the total again. But it is a very tough schedule. They're going to be road games at Georgia, Auburn, Texas AM, and Arkansas, and then the home games, Alabama, Ole Miss, and LSU. So Boy, this betting number of five and a half win total is probably about right. I'm going to call them for about a six and six campaign because of that schedule. Right, let's take a look at the Ole Miss Rebels. They're off a losing season of five and seven, all kinds of problems. Four and eight against the spread, just two and six in SEC play. They got five starters back on offense, six on defense. But Hugh Freeze just stepped down. But there's problems too off the field. They've got a self imposed one year bowl ban. Had to hire two lawyers to look into the lack of institutional control charge, which uh, schools hate to see. And then they had the game against rival Mississippi State where they got blown out 55 to 21. So a lot to work on for this season. The offense was actually very good. 32.6 points per game was 42nd in the country. And in the 15th ranked passing game, 315 yards per game, not much in the ground game. But we have some new looks as new offensive coordinator Phil Longo comes in. He was at Washington State where they run that pass-happy air raid attack. He was also at Sam Houston State, which is all about passing the football. And that's a concern because this Ole Miss team hasn't really been concerned about controlling the clock. They were last season one of the worst teams in time of possession, 34-26 to 26 against, and that can wear out defenses. On offense, we got sophomore quarterback Shea Patterson back. He got his feet wet, 880 yards, six touchdowns, and three interceptions. Started the last three games of the season. Did very well. Went two and one. And remember, he was the number one rated high school quarterback prospect coming out. In addition, they have four offensive line starters back. And the backfield, he has senior running back Akeem Judd, 826 yards, five yards per carry. And another senior in Jordan Wilkins is back. He did not play last year, but two years ago, he got his feet wet with 379 yards. 
5.3 yards per carry. And it's a very young receiving core led by sophomore Van Jefferson, 543 yards receiving last year, as well as DK Metcalf. So it should be a pretty good offense overall. The defense, though, was terrible last year, number 100 in the country in points allowed, 34 points per game. Remember, two years ago, they were great, allowing just 22.8 points per game. So we have some changes. Wesley McGriff comes in as the new defensive coordinator. He was actually here back in 2012. And the main problem he's got to work on is stopping the run because this team was terrible. They were one of the worst run defenses in the nation. 246 yards allowed per game, dead last in the SEC. They have a, a terrific senior defensive end in Marquise Haynes to build around a great pass rusher. 24 and a half sacks the last three years, seven sacks last season. And they do have a chance to be improved up front with sophomore defensive tackle Benito Jones, but there's still some depth concerns to worry about. And the Rebels had the third worst red zone defense in the country last year, allowing points 94% of the time. So there's a lot to work on with this defense. One plus is the secondary of the very great, nice group of safeties to work in, led by senior C.J. Hampton, plus sophomore quarterback Jalen Jones is above average. Now the schedule for Ole Miss, well, they could actually be 3-0 and to start the year if you're going to give them a win at Cal in week three. And then week four, though, two back-to-back -back killer games. Alabama on the road and Auburn on the road. They get LSU at home. And this team beat Alabama two years ago, 43 to 37 as an eight and a half point dog. And even last year, they covered in a wild game, 48 to 43 as an 11 point dog. But that was better with better quarterback material. Probably look at them in the seven to five or eight to four win total will be better than last year. They got to fix this run defense. Well, let's take a look at the Arkansas Razorbacks. Brett Bielema is back seven wins and six losses the last year, but they didn't cover Vegas numbers five and eight against the spread. Although they haven't been covering for a while, 23 and 15 spread run going back a few years. The offense was very productive last year, just over 30 points per game, and they averaged 264 yards passing down in the rush category, 164 yards rushing per game. But they do get a very good passing quarterback back in, in Austin Allen. He's a senior, 25 touchdowns, 15 touchdowns. Interceptions was a little high, but he had over 3,400 yards passing. One downside, though, he was sacked 34 times. If they look to run the football more, perhaps they can have some balance. But the, he was sacked a lot, and that's a concern with them passing so much, as well as an offensive line concern. And as, as prolific as they were at passing the football, the lack of the ground game hurt them in the red zone because they finished 100th in the nation in red zone efficiency. Had to look for more for running back, junior running back Raleigh Williams. Had over 1,300 yards rushing, 5.6 yards per Karen's carry. And sophomore T.J. Hammonds is actually pretty good despite only 88 yards. He can be used out of the backfield as a runner or a passer. And he's probably going to have to because four of the five top five pass targets are gone. They do have wide receiver Jared Cornelius back, 515 yards last year. And the tight ends are actually pretty good. Austin Cantrell only caught 120 yards, but he's a good target. who will probably see more action this year. And they bring in a pair of junior college wide receivers to help out in the depth. depth. Jonathan Nance is one, and Brandon Martin is another. He was a former four-star prospect, probably going to have better balance on offense. Should be a pretty good offense. The defense, though, really struggled last year, 30.8 points per game. That ranked number 84th in the country. And they have some concerns because they lost five of seven defensive linemen, and linebacker wasn't always a strong spot for them. So they have some changes. New defensive coordinator is going to be Paul Rhodes. And he was with them last year as a defensive backs coach. And he was head coach at Iowa State a couple of years ago for about six years. And he's going to make some changes, though. He's going to change them from a 4-3 base to a 3-4 scheme. And that's probably to try and shut down some of the dual threat SEC quarterbacks they're going to be facing. They're going to have to find some replacements up front. You're going to see Bijan Jackson and McKelvin Agon. They're going to get the first start in the nose guard position. However, these guys are not physically big, so stopping the run is probably going to be a major concern again. This team did improve in the secondary last year, 205.5 yards passing uh, per game, uh, and the secondary should be pretty good because you get three starters back. Now the schedule for Arkansas Week two is an interesting game. They're going to be playing TCU. This is a rematch of a game of the year ago. They were a 10-point road underdog, pulled the upset 41-38 to in a shootout. Then you got some 
difficult road games for them at Alabama. Ole Miss, LSU are all going to be very tough. And the revenge game, they're going to be hosting Auburn in Week 7. That was a game they lost 56-3 to a year ago. Difficult schedule, though, for them. Probably looking at a 6-6 six and six or 7-5 and five record for them. All right, make sure the Vegas Sportsmasters for free stats, articles, and more videos of the SEC Big Ten and Big 12. Plus, Jim Feist has that special early bird special NFL four weeks of the entire NFL preseason, including his game of the year. Jim was 72 and 48 last year in the NFL. You can get all that for 29 bucks. Just call 888-777-4155. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.